Hey guys, Seth here to help you level up your phantom. Welcome to part two of the MagentaBot build log. This one's all about the kinematics, the core XY system, and assembling all of that. If you haven't seen part one yet, click on the card, watch that thing first, and then hop back in here and come along with the series. Okay, so we're going to assemble the hot end and then the extruder carriage and then the XY gantry. First things first is the E3D V6 hot end. If you've never assembled one before, there's much better videos than this on how to do that. But basically, you start with the heater block, the heat brake, and the nozzle. You screw the nozzle in three quarters of the way, then screw the heat brake all the way in, and then tighten the nozzle up against the heat brake. Next up, you're going to put the thermistor in. Now this is an old style E3D V6 thermistor because this build is three years old. But put the thermistor in, you sleeve it in the uh, heat resistant sleeving and then you screw it into the heater block. Next up, you put the heater cartridge in. You just slip that in and tighten up the, the block so it squeezes tightly. I had to squeeze mine quite tightly and bend the block. A little bit more than I thought I was going to, but it was fine. I mean, that's what it's designed for. After that, you put the heat sink on the heat brake. Just screw that all the way down. And then you put the fan on the fan shroud. And then lastly, you stick the fan shroud onto the heat sink. And that is it. You're ready to finish wiring. Okay, and with that done, we move on to the actual carriage, which is going to hold the extruder motor and the hot end, as well as the X end stop. So you can see all of the pieces that go into the front half here. We've got some bearings and some levers and some screws, all of which are in the parts list and documented on the CBOT repo and Thingiverse page. Put a bearing on the lever, which is part of the extruder. Put a lock nut in there, keep that bearing nice and secure. That bearing is going to be pushing up against the filament and then consequently up against the drive gear of the motor. And that's the extruder assembly. These all need M3 nuts in the back end. You can see all of the holes in the back end of that face plate that all the screws will screw into. got the compression spring keep everything in good tension there on the uh, on the extruder arm and we've got the extruder motor which slides right into the face plate with the gear and you just line up the teeth on the gear with the face of the bearing screw the motor in now one of the screws on the lever actually goes all the way through the lever into the motor screws the entire thing together that way so Make sure you get the right screw for that. Then we slip the heat sink from the hot end on there. And I've got a proximity sensor, which I'm also going to attach to the front of this heat sink. So there you can see the proximity sensor arm, that attachment arm. Screw the whole thing together.
Then we've got this piece of PTFE tubing, which is going to run from the extruder motor down into the hot end to keep the filament nice and constrained on the entire path. Screw in the rest of the hot end, the heater block and nozzle assembly. And then we have a completed hot end sitting on the front face of the carriage. Run the M5 screws through the front face of the carriage, which will then attach wheels and bearings to, with the proper spacers. We'll need four of these. But I'm only going to attach the top two so that I can slip the carriage onto the XY gantry and then put the bottom wheels on so it's nice and snug and I don't have to deal with fiddling about. Another lock nut on the back side to keep everything nice and tight. And you can see I've got the, the back face plate in pink or magenta. And then you can see the XY gantry. I did the same thing, top two wheels screwed the entire thing together like that so that it can just slip right on. I'm testing the fit, make sure everything is square and, and solid. Put both sides together and now it's going to slide into place. You can see the bearing assembly and the wheels sits on there once you get it all nice and squared. You can see Wiggle it around, make sure it's square, give it a test, make sure everything's nice and solid, and then get carried away because it's entirely too much fun playing with near frictionless rolling. Then we're going to put the carriage on the XY gantry. Same process, you slip it over the top because those top two wheels are the only ones in place. So it, it'll just slip right on there. I had to actually loosen it up, I tightened everything a little bit too much. Slips right on there, make sure everything's square and rolls freely and all of that stuff. Screw in the X and Y motors to the motor brackets on the frame. Then you can see I've got the drive gear on the motor upside down so that it aligns properly with the hole for this particular belt. And on the other motor, it's flipped around again so that it also aligns properly with the hole. There you go. <laughs> Run the belt, so that belt needs to go around the back side of both and then it will connect to the left side of the carriage. Feeding it through the bearings on the X and Y gantry is rather difficult to get it to bend properly and stay in place. It's still easier to do it while it's fully assembled and on the printer than it is to try and take the bracket off and do it that way. Then you can see we're going to slip the bottom wheels on the X Y gantry. Assembled the exact same way as the top wheels but they're going to be in place. Tighten everything down nice and tight. You don't want to tighten it so tight that it warps the bracket, but you still want it nice and tight so it doesn't rattle around or get loose or anything like that. And that is the assembly of the kinematic system. Next up we'll have the Z-bed, which is the second half of the kinematic system. It takes the most modification of anything else of the printer that I've done so far because it's so big and the Z bed is so massive that I needed uh, three lead screws instead of the normal two. So stick around for episode three where we go into that build and uh, thanks for watching guys.